The war in Ukraine continues and the administration of US President Joe Biden has taken a very cautious stance regarding the risk of violating Russia's so-called red lines during the Russian-Ukrainian war. However, in Russia, they fear that if they continue to allow these small steps, then in two years they will see direct missile strikes on the Kremlin unless they find a way to fight back. The Financial Times cites the opinion of expert Alexander Gabuev from the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center in Berlin. According to him, the Russian side has a whole set of tools at its disposal. Military action, the nuclear threat, which the Kremlin sees as the ultimate insurance against defeat in this war, and hybrid threats from cyber operations and influence operations to sabotage and the transfer of weapons to the Americans' opponents. The Russian authorities have repeatedly threatened an aggressive response to Western aid to Ukraine, but have not gone beyond loud statements. A professor at the High School of Economics in Moscow believes that Russian dictator Vladimir Putin is not worried about his authority in the eyes of the Western public. Western countries are gradually increasing their support for Kyiv. Last year, Britain, Germany and the United States agreed to supply Ukraine with tanks despite Russian threats. The first batch of F-16 fighters arrived in Ukraine in June and Moscow vowed to strike NATO airfields in response. The article says, according to journalists, each time the Hawks claim that they were right since Russia's response measures have not been implemented. Many people think that long-range missiles are the same one-sided bet. The article emphasizes, according to Danish Prime Minister Met Frederiksen, Ukraine's allies must stop hesitating in helping the country defend itself and allow the use of provided weaponry for strikes on Russian territory. The most critical red line that Putin crossed was the invasion of Ukraine. My suggestion is, let us end the discussion about red lines, she said. According to Frederiksen, it has been a mistake during this war to have a public discussion about red lines, as it is simply giving the Russians too good a card in their hands. There have been constant discussions about, are we allowed to give this? It would be really good to stop the delays there have been. And I think that the restrictions on the use of weapons should be lifted, the Danish Prime Minister said. Frederiksen dismissed any assumptions that allowing Ukraine to use weapons provided by Western countries for long-range strikes against Russia would lead to escalation, dragging Kyiv's allies into the conflict. The most important red line has already been crossed, and that was when the Russians entered Ukraine, she said. So I will not accept this premise and I will never allow anyone from Russia to decide what is the right thing to do in NATO, in Europe or in Ukraine. Rocket fire from Lebanon set off explosions in northern Israel Tuesday, as Lebanon's Hezbollah militant group and Israel appeared to be spiraling to all-out war. It was not immediately clear whether the explosions were caused by rockets impacting or shrapnel falling from missile interceptions. Smoke was seen rising above southern Lebanon following a series of blasts Tuesday morning. The blasts come a day after Israel launched hundreds of airstrikes in southern and eastern Lebanon Monday, killing 492 people, including 35 children and 58 women, as the Israeli military called on residents to immediately evacuate places where it claimed the Hezbollah militant group stores weapons. The increasing strikes and counterstrikes have raised fears of an all-out war, even as Israel is still battling Hamas in Gaza and trying to return scores of hostages taken in Hamas' October 7 attack. Hezbollah began firing into Israel a day after the October 7 attack in what it said was an attempt to pin down Israeli forces to help Palestinian fighters in Gaza. Israel has retaliated with airstrikes, and the conflict has steadily intensified over the past year.